Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can uh, see my screen. Um, I'm Jeffrey Starr. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Defense Solutions. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much to Natasha Nofar Sh uh, Shai, uh, Sri Ram and Arun for this uh, wonderful event, this very informative and ed educational presentation and putting together this uh, uh, webinar. I know it's a complex task and we really, really appreciate this. Um, our kind of tagline or slogan is control the drone to control the threat. Uh, we are a counter UAS, a counter drone uh, company, and that kind of sums up our focus. It's an element of control. It's making sure you contr control the outcome of a drone incident um, to the safest possible degree. So first, a quick uh, overview of, um, of the company. Let me um, try to uh, move ahead here. Okay, um, so uh, above all, uh, like I said, we're a provider of a cyber takeover counter drone solutions. And we really focus on the most sensitive and challenging environments and situations. And we'll talk more about what that means. Uh, very important, we already have a global presence. We have hundreds of deployments by all the top tier government agencies. Uh, we're present at major global events. Uh, we're in over 20 countries, five continents, including the, the five eyes countries, the G7 countries. Um, we're protecting a lot of critical infrastructure and important sites, for example, uh, uh, airports at a major G7 country. And also, I want to emphasize we're already um, very deeply involved with India. We have partners, we have a presence, we have ongoing active demonstrations. So, um, you know, if you need to get in touch with us or see our product, uh, we're there, we're, we're already uh, on the ground, so to speak. Um, very important when you're talking about counter UAS and counter drone, we're selected and proven. Uh, and I encourage you to always check this angle. Uh, we're already entrusted uh, by some of the top agencies around the world. Uh, we have systems in production. Uh, you can see some of the logos on the right. Um, for example, the federal uh, in the US, the DOD, the DHS and the DOJ all have different agencies um, using our product large, very complex events. Uh, most of our customers, most of our um, users, most of our uh, events, we are, uh, for obvious operational reasons, uh, confidential, can't really name them, but some have made their name, uh, have uh, been allowed to into the public domain. And you can see some photos on the lower right here. Uh, we were protecting a papal mass and a papal visit, uh, G7 summit and uh, major sporting events. Uh, we have over 150 people uh, throughout uh, throughout the world. Um, our vision, uh, even though we're a counter drone company, a counter UAS company, we're very much a pro drone, if you will. Uh, we're very much want the drone powered society to flourish. And, and we do this uh, by supporting safe and secure drone proliferation and drone adoption with innovative solutions that defend against the rogue drones, against the small percentage of bad operators or bad actors or careless or clueless. Uh, and that really helps us fulfill um, our mission of overcoming the rogue drone threat with the most advanced solutions uh, in our most sensitive airspace of our customers in a very controlled manner. So let's talk about what that means. But first, the problem, I'm sure you're all educated and familiar with this. There have been drone incidents around the world in many different sectors, uh, whether it be in uh, airports and aviation, the famous Gatwick incident was sort of ground zero. And from there, there have been many others. Uh, smuggling in prisons, protecting VIPs, um, of course, uh, military conflicts, uh, drones have become more prominent. Uh, stadiums and arenas, uh, critical infrastructure, uh, law enforcement, homeland security. These are all just in, uh, kind of examples of how uh, prevalent and persistent have been drone incidents across lots of different sectors, environments, and use cases. Now, more specifically in India, and we've been tracking this in India very closely, and fortunately, uh, the Indian media and communications has been very active and vibrant in reporting about lots of different incidents in India. And um, these are just examples specifically in India, just in the last year to half a year, where you've had incidents either um, at airports, at famous heritage sites, landmarks, um, harassing at VIP events, um, government buildings, lots of activity at the borders. Um, the police have been challenged with lo lots of um, law enforcement and smuggling kind of uh, incidents. Stadiums and arenas, you just had a concert, uh, in its, in its, in it, at a concert just uh, a few weeks ago, as well as critical infrastructure and other elements of homeland security. So 
again, this has uh, become a pervasive problem all around the world, and uh, you can see many different in incidents in India. Now, the reason we're kind of familiar with this, and this is not our core business, but this is just a public service that we provide. You can go to our website. We have something called the Drone Attack and Incident Tracker, where these are all public domain media published incidents, and you can filter by date, by location. Here, we've done a filter by India. You can see almost uh, every week there's multiple incidents. So this is kind of um, what we're responding to and what we're tracking. Now, um, another element on the military side is what we call the weaponization of cheap drones. Uh, it, what's happened now in military conflicts is not just military drones, but very cheap commercial drones are being weaponized by all kinds of groups uh, to wage warfare. And you can see this has been in the headlines of the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times and Economist. Basically, they're calling it Costco drones or cheap drones or consumer drones, all becoming the flying uh, IEDs, if you will, of the, uh, of, of the new generation conflict. Um, now, there are a lot of traditional technologies, legacy technologies that have been used uh, for many years um, to combat or to, to counter drones. And they're great and they're tried and true, radar, optical, uh, directional finders, acoustic. They all have challenges though. You can have false positives. You might need a clear line of sight. Um, you might not be able to obtain the location and they may be dependent on sound. Um, on the mitigation side, uh, the traditionally, uh, the, the two main uh, methods have been some form of jamming or some sort of physical shooting or kinetic uh, uh, device, but there you have the risks of operational disruption and you have collateral damage. Defense solutions came into being to address this with a next generation approach. You have what we call RF cyber detection. It's a cyber based method, fast and accurate detection with no false positives, no line of sight required. And on the mitigation side, it's a takeover. It's a literal takeover of the, the rogue drone, the hostile drone. We disconnect, we take it over, control it, safe route, safe landing without uh, any disruption, total continuity, um, no collateral damage, no stoppage. That's, that's our approach. Um, it's again, a RF cyber takeover, detect and take control, land it safely. It's also important to say what we're not, we're non-jamming, we're not kinetic, no line of sight required. You get a sense here from what we call the drone incident life cycle. First, we detect an alert, but it's all rapid, accurate, fast with a controlled outcome. You locate and track the drone itself, as well as the home location, the pilot location, identify the drone, make, model, whatever it is, fend it off or take control and land. Um, we focus on the most dangerous drones. Uh, they can be DGI manufactured, non-DGI, modified, tampered, adapted, but we really focus on the most dangerous drones, those that can carry heavy payloads, travel long distances. Um, the system can be deployed, so many different use cases, highly adaptable, it can be on the go, military vehicle or covert vehicle, ground level tactical, high altitude tactical, top of mountains, on top of buildings, long range directional if you need to protect corridors like at airports, and it can also be um, high altitude stationary. Um, our motto, if you will, is always staying a drone threat ahead. There are continuous system updates. You can respond very rapidly. And we anticipate the unpredictable by proactively building for the next generation for upcoming threats. Um, the concepts around what we do are uh, control, safety, focus, and future. But all of them are to drive towards continuity, to make an incident not an incident, if you will. Um, control, that means our philosophy, our uh, rule of thumb is the best way to control the drone threat is not just by jamming or shooting, but the best way to control the drone threat is take control of the drone itself. Uh, safety, a safe landing or a fending off, sending it back where it came from, or a forced safe landing for safe airspace, safe continuity. Focus on the most dangerous drones and employ uh, prioritization and assessment and managing the risk. And as I said before, always staying a drone threat ahead, always anticipating what's um, the next dangerous drone out there. And therefore, ultimately getting to continuity, because we think continuity is key, uh, continuity from uh, to allow the ongoing life to continue, whether it be communications, transportation, commerce, whatever it might be, but continuing that, uh, that ongoing life. So that's uh, basically our approach to um, uh, our approach to the uh, counter UAS uh, arena. Uh, again, I'm Jeffrey Starr, the CMO. You can contact me. Uh, we also have someone who's dedicated and responsible uh, for India. His name is Udi Lowy. 
Odilawi, and um, you can have his email here as well. You can also send an email to info. You can visit our website, which is very uh, content rich. A lot of information there about uh, counter drone and counter drone, including our incident tracker. So uh, that was the 10 minute version, uh, very, very uh, rushed, but I hope it gives you an overview of our concept and, and philosophy on how we uh, focus on safe outcomes and controlling uh, the rogue drone itself. Uh, thank you very much. So we will go for a few questions now. Uh, sure. Please write your questions, uh, attendees. I request you to please write your questions. I see that we have one question already. Defend has its own office in India. I mean, does Defend have its own office in India or uh, does it have any collaboration with any Indian company currently? Uh, we don't have our own direct office, but we do have partners. Um, and uh, I can... Uh, we could, you, if you send uh, if you send that inquiry to me, we will uh, send you some of our uh, you know our existing sure. partner contacts. Uh, so and, probably and it's a good idea to things. share your uh, details. Yeah, you have already on your slide, uh, maybe in the chat box also, so that everyone can see. Uh, sure, so you, okay. The next question is: If the detected drone and RC is not registered in the library, then how will it detect identify the drone? Will it detect the commercially available toy drones working on 2.4 gigahertz frequency band only? Will it detect the in-house made customized drones? If some other RF communication system is using the same RF frequency as the drones are using, will it detect the RF signal systems also? That's quite a elaborate uh, yeah. one. <laughs> I, um, we, we will take a snapshot of this and, and make sure to get the, uh, the reply to all of okay, those. Okay, I'll do um, that. But, uh, okay, but uh, but basically, um, okay, and we and we do, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, what what people sometimes call uh, autonomous drones do, in fact, have some sort of RF signal, and we are um, recognizing a lot of do-it-yourself drones and recognizing um, drones that have been modified or tampered with, um, and and we'll answer these questions in more detail um, uh, uh, offline. Yeah, I'll share it with you. Great. Uh, to complete in Indian defense, do you need you need to manufacture in India? Do you have plans to manufacture in India? Um, it well, um, it, I guess it, there's a uh, elements of um, uh, you know manufacturing, assembly, installation, all of that. So yes. um, I know that we're compliant wherever we, uh, we wherever we operate um, and we're active. So um, so I'm sure. Uh, Depending on the definitions and workflows of manufacture, we can, uh, we, you know, we can find a way to uh, to support the local market. How do you take control of a rogue drone? Well, uh, <laughs> the, we're focusing more on the presentations on the what than the how, and and you know, obviously the how is quite uh, quite complicate complex. But we are based, uh, we are RF based, and we're based on the protocols. We're based on you know. Uh, uh, interfacing with the protocol uh, communications of the drone itself. We basically, we take it over. It has a new master. Uh, we convince it, persuade it, mesmerize it, hypnotize it, however you want to describe it. And now it has a new master. And we then, uh, then the, end, the operator of our system can either choose to fend it off, send it back where it came from or to its default fail safe instructions or to um, safely uh, safely landed. I won't obviously get into the proprietary technology of, uh, of the how, um, yes. but that's kind of the, the RF cyber, uh, you know, protocol based uh, uh, methodology overall. So the next question is, uh, uh, are you willing to, you know, come to India for a practical demonstration if required? Uh, oh, more than that, we're already doing that. Uh, we're okay. doing that on a regular basis uh, with visits, with partners. Um, so, so demonstrations are are uh, readily available. Uh, just get in contact us with us, and uh, either you know it can be a, a private one, or we may be doing a one to many one um, at an event. Uh, we're also at quite a few uh, events uh, ourselves or with our partners. So, yes, we're doing active demonstrations in India on an ongoing basis. Uh, does Defend have a solution with a directional and omnidirectional jamming CUAS that can be used from the same dashboard C4? Okay, so we uh, we're not jamming. We're explicitly not jamming, but we recognize and realize that some of our customers also want jammers. We're very uh, we have you know open APIs. We integrate with other systems, including jammers, uh, including. Uh, 
command and control systems. And so, yes, we can integrate with third party uh, jammers where, uh, and, and obviously the customer can set up their own operational business rules about when they may want to, to jam as opposed to take over. Uh, if some other RF communication system is using the same RF frequency, I guess you already, that question was asked. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah. So I Excellent. think that's all for now. Most okay, of I know uh, in, in a short period of time, it's hard to answer uh, so many yeah. technical questions, but we are committed to getting, uh, we will get back to the to the users who ask these questions with uh, detailed sure. questions. And a lot of information is available on our website too, including white papers. Sure. Uh, so I think it's time to move on to the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you for the wonderful presentation.